Hi everyone, welcome back to the Coding Game channel. Today I'm back with my colleague Corbin for another tech interview. The topic of today's video is an actual interview from Google I saw on the web recently and I figured it would be a nice exercise to do together. All right, Corbin, uh, thanks for uh, joining me for this uh, mock interview uh, number two, let's say. Today, I want to play a little game, but you will have to code that, that little game. So have you heard about Wordle? Who hasn't? Uh, today, that's what we're going to be doing. I want to do it in two parts. Well, maybe we'll cut that into two videos. Uh, who knows? So we have our time. Uh, take as much time as you need. Uh, but first, I'd like maybe for you to implement however you want uh, the graphical part and then we can do a bit more of the business logic behind like the algorithm that checks the colors and stuff like that. Do you have any questions before we start? I think one of the things that we should do to prep is uh, probably use drawing mode to, to add in an image of what Wordle might look like. Yeah. I like that. So let me go grab a screenshot really quick. I didn't even know you could uh, upload pictures in the drawing mode on Colorpad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I figured that would be a, a good promo for that. Okay, so now that we have an image of what Wordle might look like, right? We can see that they're made of uh, five squares horizontally. And then what is that? Six squares vertically. So what we can do is we can probably use something like a CSS grid, right? So we'll go into our index.js. We can say something along the lines of, let's create a few components first. Let's do const letter and we'll just say T for now. So that's gonna be our letter. Uh, we'll have a const, uh, well, we could have a const of row, which might make more sense. There's a few different ways of doing this. We could do a row, we could do a grid. I think I'm gonna to go without CSS grid just because I'm more familiar with Flexbox for this instance. So here we'll say const row. And actually what we can do is we can pass in a letter. Mm -hmm. Right. And then for row, we can say, let's just hard code it for now of const letters of T E S T -E S. And then we can say, uh, return a div, which contains for each letter letter no longer looks like a word <laughs> mm -hmm. when you type it too many times. Yeah. And then we can say something along the lines of, uh, actually we can pass in letters. By the way, I think the effect of, uh, you know, saying a word too many times in a row and it doesn't make sense anymore. I think it's right. called jamais vu. It's the opposite oh, of déjà okay. vu. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, okay. And then what I'll do here is I will just hard code this. Um, so we can just do, I know I could just map through it six times, but why don't we just do a row with letters, with letters, and then another row, we'll actually hard code that. We can just declare row a few different times. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So right now, very little will render. Um, we have our TESTS, -E we have our default CSS, which we can go ahead and get rid of. Uh, let's create some classes. So that looks like maybe a, a line pixel of one PX, right? So let's do a uh, letter box and we'll say order of one PX solid. And I'm just gonna hard code it as gray because you know, the, the exact color doesn't matter. Actually, I guess I can get the exact color really quickly. Exact color is D3, something like that. And then inside of the div, we can say class name equals uh, letter box. So now we can see the little outline. We can also make the height and the width one REM. And then just to center the text horizontally and vertically, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just do a shorthand of display flex and justify content center and align item center. And then we'll have the letter row, which we will do display flex and uh, flex wrap, no wrap. So then that way inside of our row, we can sit here and uh, make them just a flat row. So there we go. Uh, I'm actually having a bit of a difficulties reading that. So let's actually make that to REM. We'll make the border to just to make it a little bit bigger for us. So we don't have to sit there and try to zoom too bad. Uh, and then we'll say font size to REM. There we go. A little bit bigger. Nice. Okay. So we have our first row. We also, oh, interesting. Okay. So the, one of the problems here is that our letters are, are an empty array, meaning yeah. that nothing is going to render, right? So we could say one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And now we should probably say something along the lines of for each letter and have a margin of one REM. 
one REM might be too much. <laughs> yep. Let's do 0 0.2 REM. There we go. I'm looking Looks a little bit better. <laughs> do we need to worry about the keyboard? No, no. Let's 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 not play with that. It will take too long. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just keep it with uh, uh, the the actual testing. Because I think one of the things that that uh, is always fun with interviews is trying to uh, uh, keep the uh, length within control. So yeah, sure. We'll also get the colors for the green. I'm going to use CSS variables here. So let's actually do root dash dash green, or we'll call this success. And then we have our default state gray or no match. Yeah, I think I like match, no match, partial match a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's just declaring a few of the colors. And we can say, let's do state and be of type. Let me add a code comment because we're not in TypeScript. Um, but we can say param uh, of type uh, match or partial match or no match state. Letter should probably be an object maybe, but for now let's, mm, yeah, letter should be an object. So actually, hang on, I can do this faster because I can multi-select all of these items. And I can say letter, state, we'll say match, no match, no match, no match, partial match, right? Uh, and then state could also be an empty string because that's just empty, right? Mm -hmm. And then here we can do const default letters. Uh, I think I could do something clever here with new array of length six dot map. This doesn't work first try. I might just default it to hard coding because it's just <laughs> sure. me trying to be clever. <laughs> okay. Uh, map to letter of empty state of empty uh, state. Isn't that five instead? Uh, is what letters? five? Oh, Therefore, yes, you're yeah. totally right here. We'll just say one, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. I think that's one too many. There we go. There we go. So now we're rendering out and now we have a state that's associated. So here we can say something along the lines of uh, const class name equals letterbox and state. And then we'll assign class name to class name. And now in our CSS, we can say dot letterbox. We can duplicate that three times. There we go. <laughs> so now we have three different classes. Dot match should have a background of variable match. Partial match should have a background of variable partial mat match. And then no match should have no match. There we go. So that's the initial start. Um, we're also going to say that for all of these, let's change the text color to white since that's in the mockup. And let's also change the border color to match this. There we go. We can change the font super quickly to uh, sans serif. There we go. Looks a little bit closer now. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. One more front end thing challenge that I'd like you to try maybe would be to have the little animation, you know, uh, I'm not sure exactly when it animates, but you know, there's like this little flip mm -hmm. thing. I think when you finish or maybe when you enter a letter. Yeah. So we can do uh, something along the lines of a keyframe, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to define a keyframes um, and we'll call this um, reveal flip. We have a 0% and a 100% and maybe like a 50%. So here we can say uh, we'll do a transform and I have to do an MDN lookup really quick on the transforms because I know there's rotate. There's also translate, but translate seems to move the object, which isn't what we're looking for. There's scale. Uh, seems like seems like we might be looking for a rotate of some kind. Is there just a rotate? Ah, OK, so there's a rotate X, which is kind of what we're looking for, because if we look at the animation originally, it, there's like this weird kind of like half flip, right, that I think we can do with a, a rotate of X. Uh, so let's say rotate X of zero degrees and then zero degrees again, and then we'll flip it 90 degrees. And for now, I'm just going to say, uh, uh, for the match, we're just going to do the animation of reveal flip. I think it's reveal flip like 30 milliseconds or maybe it's animate here. Let's do animation name reveal flip animation duration. Let's do one second animation iteration count infinite just to test it. 
there we go. So that's like part of the little bit of a flip. We should be able to say something along the lines of creating a class called dot flip. And then we can move back to our index.js and we can actually probably do something a bit wonky with React here. Are you familiar with how uh, forward ref works and how ref works a little bit? Absolutely not. Okay, so, so the yes. idea behind a ref- That will be your chance to explain uh, to me. How, how React works. Yeah. So the idea behind a ref means that like you can access variables and methods from inside of another component, right? Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can say a forward ref here. I want to say you accept the props. I may have to look up the, the uh, forward ref API really quickly because I can't remember if it's props first, then it's ref. It is. Okay. So we take props and then we take a ref and then we can say, sorry, I need to preface this with React. And we can do React use imperative handle. And we'll say flip is a method, which then will add a class name temporarily, right? So we said uh -huh. const should flip set should flip react dot use state false. And then when it's flip, we'll just set should flip to true, and then we can append this to our class. And now what we can do is we can assign a ref for this letter. Uh, oh, hmm. This is interesting because we have an array of items. So refs in an array is kind of tricky, but we definitely still need it in some way. What if we, what if we, instead of using a ref, what if we raise state, right? We can say should flip. So I'm realizing that this is actually a bit more complicated than I would like to make it, if I'm being honest. And then should flip is set to false. All of these will be false. And we'll have a button at the very end just to test. Cons letters set letters equals react.useState. Uh, just for simplicity, let's only have the first one flip and then kind of let the other one, or, or we could have them all flip at once because otherwise we have to do a, a deferred reaction, uh -huh. which we could do, but I think that would add a bit of more complexity that we might not have time for today. And then we can say set letters. We'll take the array of V. We'll say spread V. Uh, actually, I apologize. We'll say const new array equals a spread of V and then V zero index dot should flip equals true return V. So that's kind of like the, the, the shortest way to write that while also still creating the immutability that React needs to be able to uh, uh, respond to those changes in the set state. And then we'll add an on click, which then flips them. So now if I hit run. I'm not sure this will run first try, but we have a button here. And if I click it, it doesn't seem to, oh, hang on. That's because I'm not passing it. Should flip equals letter dot should flip. Okay. I'm still not convinced that that, yeah, it's still not running, but that is because looking at my debugger here, letters. Oh, I know why it's because we don't have a key. So let's set a key of letter dot letter. Mm, no, we definitely still needed that, but it doesn't seem to be the root cause. What does the key parameter do? Ah, uh, the key parameter uh, lets react know uh, which item is which um, value in the uh, list, right? So when it goes to re-render, the key essentially says, don't re-render this because it's the same value. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a performance optimization that shouldn't matter too much, but I just realized what the actual problem is. It's because not only are we, the array is being reassigned, right? So mm -hmm. app is re-rendering, but the objects are never being reassigned. So the object equality is passing. And I don't think letter, the, the letter component is re uh, reevaluating. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can say V dash zero equals V dash zero should flip true. Five minutes later. I know exactly what's wrong. I'm never returning new array. <laughs> Hang on, I'm returning V. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now if we rerun it and we hit flip, now we can see that the T is actually flipping, right? Great. So we've done the basic UI of Wordle, but now there's a lot more to implement, especially, well, actually playing and the algorithm that checks which letters are correct or not and colors them accordingly. And you can watch that part of the interview 
on CoderPad's YouTube channel, which is managed by Corbin. Coding Game and CoderPad are actually part of the same company now, and I'm very happy to have the opportunity to collaborate with that side of the product because it's really a great tool to conduct live technical interviews, and that's a kind of video I really enjoy making. So thank you for watching this first part of the interview, and you can go watch the rest on CoderPad's channel. I'll leave a link in the description. See ya!